everybody. This is Rachel with The Pursuit, and I am so happy to be here today with Beth Sturgis. I have to admit, she has been my personal therapist for about a decade. <laughs> Wonderful, wise woman. She is a licensed professional therapist, and she also is licensed in nutrition and health and wellness, which I think is so important now. We talk about that a lot, a whole body approach to therapy this month, we are discussing marriage, divorce, dating, all things relationship, and I could not think of anybody better. So thank you for being here, Beth. Thank you, Rachel. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So your approach is let's work on you. Yeah. Let's get that figured out. Let's make sure you're behaving and enacting the way that you right. want to. Right. The the a, a good version of yourself. Yes. Before you start thinking about divorce. Right. But then let's say you know you've gone through that process right. and you've put some things in place and you're practicing and right. nothing is nothing yeah. is moving nothing's helped so what do you suggest at that point well the whole process of doing that puts you in a position of being able to have some difficult conversations so the first step i call the ted talk so a ted talk is something that's very clear you've thought it out you've memorized it practically and it's like step one, mm -hmm. okay? So it's your first boundary, so to speak. So your TED Talk might sound like, um, honey, you've been watching pornography. I've caught you at it several times, and you, th you say it's no big deal, but I've done some reading, and I've learned that it's quite addictive. It actually changes the brain, and you've fallen into a trap and it's almost like you have to go to something like AA. There's a book called Every Man's Battle that you need to read, and you need to go to their intensive, and you need to follow up with their phone calls and just do the work that needs to be done. Mm. And I need you to do that soon. Okay, not really give an ultimatum like, boy, you better do it by Saturday or else. It's more like I need you to think about doing that soon. Okay. That would be a TED Talk. Okay. Step that one. would be step one. That's what I need. Okay. And then it's not done. Okay. And it's like, you know, I noticed that you haven't pursued my request. And this is step two. All your reasons why. Mm. How it makes you feel. You're wondering if your marriage is going to, what's it going to do to the kids? Um, you're, you're, it's interfering with your sex life. It's interfering with your happiness, my happiness. You're falling deeper into the trap. All the reasons why. Mm. Okay? And you just can't go to step three until you've got all those reasons out there. Okay. Because the whole purpose of these steps is that you never go backwards. That's hard to do. It, yeah, most, <laughs> most people start with step four, which is ignoring. Okay, okay. Everyone says that, oh, I've already done that step. I'm like, no, but you didn't do it in order. <laughs> yeah. Because what you knew, need to do is earn the right to do that, where you're actually telling them everything they need to know. The purpose yeah. is give them every opportunity. Because that's honoring to the relationship. Yeah. And it means you can look back and not regret maybe how you handle things, which yeah. I think is so important as because someone who's been there. Because too many times, yes. if you go too fast, then you feel guilty, and then you go back, and then the person gets, it's like a child who's being disciplined in an inconsistent way. They get confused. Like, right. well, she didn't get mad last time, and now I did that. You know? Right, right. So the third step, remember, you have to get all your reasons out. And then you don't ever go back. So now the third step is just dealing with the process of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because you're not following through, I'm feeling unloved. Mm -hmm. I don't trust you anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, those process statements. Right. You know, this is not working. This is scary for me. A lot of feeling words coming through in those process statements. Right. Okay. So you do that for a long, and you can really um, stretch this out yes. as long as you want. But a lot, but it's, I think this is so hard to mm -hmm. do. I think people don't really understand when you're in a very difficult relationship and you're mm -hmm. feeling unloved, right? right? You tend to go back into that mode that you were supposed to be working on before, yeah. which is, I can't believe you wouldn't do this. You, 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 yeah. you, 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 yeah, you. That doesn't really help. And 
that's I, I find people they just gravitate towards that and it does not it does not get you anywhere. I know, but it's a protector. But it's a protector. It's a blame blame yes. shifting is I'm a, hurting and you're at fault. Yeah. And we're so that's the focus. anger, blame yes. shifting, rationalization. Right. We have this whole list of protectors that we use. And then when we use that against a partner, then their protector shows up. Right. And then they wound us. And then our protector shows up. So it's this big thing that just keeps escalating out of control. Totally. And it just it heightens and heightens and heightens. Yeah. And I mean, I noticed that with everything I went through, mm-hmm. uh, I always felt so much more empowered and so much better about myself mm-hmm. when I actually told the truth. Yeah. Which what the, and the only truth I can tell is the one that I, I yeah. know from my perspective. And right. it's I feel. Yeah. I'm feeling this. Right. I want you to know that I'm feeling this. But you if know. you if you don't wait until step three, it might and then not it doesn't even work. Matter. So right. the idea is you give them the this is what I need. These are all my reasons why. Now because you're not doing it, I'm feeling very unloved. Right. So you do that for a while, and then you get to apply step four, which mm-hmm. is just to shut down mm. and stop trying. So the other person's like wow, she's not really after me anymore. And they can either think, well, she must just have accepted it, or they can think, hmm, I wonder what she's thinking. Because mm. she's really not pursuing this anymore. Mm. You know? Yeah. And so from there, you've now earned the right to say, I just think we need to sleep in separate bedrooms. I, I feel like you're my enemy. I don't want to sleep with my enemy, mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. The Bible says don't go to bed angry. Yeah. So when right. you're sleeping with an, ang- an enemy, someone that's just ignoring your needs, y- you're going to be angry all night, you know, and every night. Now, do people balk at that step? Or do you, No, do you they find do that- it too soon. Okay, so they, they'll just get angry and be like, I'm done. Yeah. Versus I feel like there are personality types out there, though, that they'd yeah. be like, well... Is that going to mean that we're going to get divorced? Yeah. Is that going to, you know, they'll start to freak out yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know, especially people who are enabling, maybe. Yeah. Who are ignoring yeah. uh, from the beginning. They didn't do any of the steps. They're yeah. just pretending like it doesn't exist. Yeah. And then because all they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason for the steps is that you don't let your anger create a situation where you just suddenly lose it. Mm -hmm. And you do something drastic and, um, you know, the big D word starts coming out, you know, the big threat. And now you really don't feel like you're ever going to be able to get back together. Mm. Okay. Yep. So if the partner chooses to, and I'm using pornography as just an example because it's pretty prevalent. It's really prevalent. But if the partner chooses to continue or they hide it, they won't get, I don't know, what's it called? I should know this something eyes I don't know there's some kind of thing you can put on the computer oh yeah you know what it's called covenant eyes covenant eyes thank Mm -hmm. you I knew there was something with Mm -hmm. eyes but um that would be something they would be willing to put on their computer every household with a boy in it needs to have it even girls to tell you the truth they're going after the girls as well so that's just something good to have on all computers in a home but the next step then is to ask for a separation. And I always suggest a legal separation because if you're gonna separate, you need to protect the finances, especially for the woman. So a separation where someone just moves out doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to go the divorce route. You can go all the way up to that step and have a legal separation, but not really pursue a divorce. Now, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. The lawyers won't go for that. Right. (laughs) They'll say, you might as well just get divorced. It looks the same way. But if you are really asking God and and doing this whole process with God's help and God's strength and not going to that next step until you almost have permission, like you have earned the right to now to go to that next step, you don't have the guilt. You have confidence. You're still in touch with yourself. And now you go to a lawyer who says, well, we can't just keep it at, you know, legal separation. But you could. You could. For an indefinite period of time. Right. Now, do you think, 
it makes a lot of sense to me that that would be a step in this long process mm-hmm. of you've worked on yourself and now you're you're mm-hmm. moving through these steps mm-hmm. that it kind of helps you get out of something that would be toxic enough mm-hmm. to cause you issues in the long run. Mm-hmm. You know, that separation. Right. Because I think a lot of times the, the fear of divorce for some people is so great. Mm-hmm. And then the explosion happens and they're getting a divorce. Yeah. Right. And everybody's in fear and their brain's not working. Right. Yeah. But the idea that I, it's not good to live with someone who's mm-hmm. completely toxic yeah. for a long period of time. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I always say God loves you more than he hates divorce. I think that's absolutely true, and I'm a big mm-hmm. fan. I don't know if you all know Dennis Prager, but he has talked about divorce in the past. If in the long run it steals your joy, then it ends up stealing your testimony Yeah, because you're supposed to have a testimony in the world yeah. as a believer. Yeah. And if your joy is gone, mm-hmm. your testimony is gone. Yeah. If right? you're using up all of your energy just yeah. protecting yourself and your kids, and, you know, an emotional divorce hurts the kids not as much as a physical divorce Mm because then they have to deal with all the practicality but it hurts the kids when they see their parents not so much fighting because it's good actually for kids to see parents fight oh good (laughs) i know i can just let you off the hook but what they what they need to see is them coming back together yes and working it out. And working it out so that they learn that, hey, I can enter into conflict. I don't have to just be a pleaser or be a controller because I don't know how to do conflict. But I watched my parents, you know, pick at each other and, you know, carry on. But then I also saw them kiss each other goodbye in the morning, okay. you know. And those kinds of things are healthy for kids. It's only the parents that aren't talking. hmm that's the emotional divorce. Mm-hmm. They're ignoring each other. You get it? Right. That hurts the kids a lot. Well, and I think adults believe often that they're somehow keeping the secret. Yeah. But they're not. No. Kids, the kids know. see, oh, yeah, they especially know. the youngest. Right. The youngest in the family knows all. It seems to be true. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I teach families how to do these. Um, meetings the family meeting and they've got a notebook and they go through these different categories and they start off with scheduling but then they get down to these deeper issues of what's bothering you you know is there anything about our family that bothers you yeah you know we have to eat all this healthy food and i like to go to johnny's because we get to have pizza every time and stuff like that where they get to express themselves you know and then mom says well maybe we can have you know some pizza once in a while (laughs) (laughs) with all that bad cheese but you know they have a voice and the youngest one can even be the leader because it goes around and they trade off being and the youngest one can even lead the family meeting because no one gets to talk until the youngest one says it's your turn it's my youngest would eat that up i know wouldn't she (laughs) She would. She no. would be all about that. No, no, and no, that meeting I'm would be the most charge. organized meeting ever, right. yeah, anyone's ever had. That's, yeah. right. That's awesome. But That's it really brings idea. the family together. You know? That's a lovely Especially idea. if there's an emotional divorce going on, to have a family yeah. meeting so the kids have a place to express themselves. And they're not right. going to say, hey, I'm tired of this ignoring each other. You guys need to talk. Because they don't know. They just know they feel it. Right. But some of their anger might start to come out. Right. Which anger is a secondary emotion. Mm. Under it is hurt and fear. Right. So one of the kids might say, are you guys getting a divorce? Mm. They just need a place to say that. The and parents that will look at each space, other yeah. and say, well, no. And then maybe dad will think, wow. Or mom will think, wow, maybe I should... Pay more attention. Work on this. Yeah. That's, I've never heard that idea, but that's one of those things that's a Mm down-to-earth, simple concept. You Mm -hmm. could do this tonight. Yeah. And see what comes out. I mean, if you are looking for a way to improve your family, your relationship, what an easy, simple, straightforward. Well, not really. Well, not not easy, but. Trying to get a whole bunch of family (laughs) members together with all the activities and everything is hard, but. I, I like, I, I don't know if this is true for everyone. In my family, a lot of it works well right before bed. 
because yes. for some reason mm-hmm. it's like the day Everybody's is done, there. the right. stress is down, they're a little tired, yeah. which for some odd reason seems to make them more honest. Right. I don't know. Right. They say whatever they think right. at the time. Um, but, you know, before bed or some time period like that where you just allow that space, I think we, we haven't done necessarily the full family meeting. Yeah. But I've done those those sorts of things with the kids, just yeah. asking them those questions about the family or how are you feeling? Would yeah. You, you know, is there anything you wish yeah. we would do or, you yeah. know, and and really interesting things come out when yeah. your kid, we just let your kids yeah. have a space. I know. I, I had my grandson over the other day, and he was just playing along, and all of a sudden he says, I really miss my friend at school. Hmm. He, he, they moved me up a grade, and he's back down, and I never get to see him anymore. That kind of space where someone's just sitting there listening, and it takes a grandma to do that, right? <laughs> Not too many moms have the time to do that. But just sitting and giving them the space, and then all of a sudden he comes up with these this feeling mm. that he just needed to express. Yeah. It was, it was waiting. so cool. Yeah. yeah, waiting for the right time. Yeah. So one of the things that now the parents can do that's similar to the family meeting, but just between themselves, and I just actually I can't take credit for this. I learned this from a client who's uh, seeing a couples counselor. So I'm learning it from a counselor whose name I don't even know. <laughs> but I liked it, and I wrote it down, is asking each other, periodically, maybe once a week on a date night or whatever. It would be cool if you could do it daily, but just asking each other, so what do you think about yourself right now? Hmm. And then wait for the answer. Well, I'm thinking I'm, I'm feeling, I'm really in touch with my inner critic right now. I'm really mad that I said this thing and I wish I hadn't. And just giving that, hmm. you know, what do you think about me right now? Well, actually, I think that you are uh, really too busy. You're really distracted. <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> I, I can hear this coming up. I know. Up. <laughs> I, know. I, know you I hear well. it coming. <laughs> you're, you're, you're too distracted, you know, you're, you're too tired, blah, yeah. blah, blah, right? That would be a typical thing a husband mm-hmm. would say to his wife. And then... Here's the, the, the hardest question. And how are you feeling about God right now? Mm. How is he seeing you? And unless the answer is he is loving me anyway, he is forgiving me, he is encouraging me, but if it's a negative, mm. you know, God's really down on me, you know. He knows I should be doing this better. And, but if you hear that negative, then that's kind of a cue to, ramp up some some Bible study and some changing your perspective of how God sees us. He created us. He sees us like he sees, like we see our children and right. grandchildren. Right. We just love them to death. Right. And we hate it when things go wrong. You know, God yeah. doesn't make the things go wrong. It's the enemy that makes everything go wrong. And people blame God because he's all powerful. But there's a legal system that God set in place that allows the enemy to do things. But God says, but I will redeem it. Right. And I I think it's so funny. I was just talking to my husband about this. A lot of times in the church, what we get taught is either way over here on Mm -hmm. this side, which is grace, 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 grace. God doesn't care about what you do. Oh, which yeah, it's it's that's or he almost covers the it up with his don't grace. worry about it yeah because he's got it covered yeah and then over here you have God thinks you're horrible and wretched and you're oh. just so lucky that he decided he was going to save you you can't even believe how lucky you are yeah. you know and yeah. you get you get the these two extremes, two extremes. Yeah. but really there is this beautiful place like you're talking about yeah. where he's a parent yeah he wants you to choose righteousness because yeah. it's good for you yeah. because he loves you yeah. and because he's about life yeah everything about him is about life yeah you know and anything that's destructive is going to break his heart yeah and so but he's a he's got all those emotions mm-hmm. right towards mm-hmm. us he's yeah. got the jealousy and the yeah. the up, upsetness but the redemption and the love and the, yeah he's got it all yeah and when you think about a great parent yeah you kind of understand that differently. You understand, yeah. well, when I get out of line, I feel like I, I feel like I need to go to him mm-hmm. because 
he can help me. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. because he's mad at me, not because he wants right. to condemn me, because that's the place you run when you're a kid with a healthy parent, right? You run to your parent. Yeah. But, you know, right. God set it up where the dad especially represents him. Right. So if dad didn't do it well, then it's kind oh, yeah. of hard to come to God. That's right. And pour your heart out. <laughs>